It's no secret that One UI is stacked full of hidden features that make it really hard for you to find, unless you know where to look. Today I'm uncovering six One UI features that I think you should know and showing you where they are. Let's go. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Samsung software has always been packed full of features, right back all the way through to the TouchWiz days where people just vomited at the sight of it. If you knew what you were doing in TouchWiz, you would have a lot of fun. That hasn't really changed. Samsung has just packaged it up much neater and more visually aesthetic than they have before. That doesn't mean the features aren't still there. So let's get into my six features that I think you probably don't know about. Number one, I think this is a new one, but when you actually make a phone call, Samsung allows you to change the focus of the microphone. Just made a phone call and you're talking to someone. Now, when you swipe down from the quick panel at the top and you do the two finger swipe down because you want to get the full expanded quick panel, you'll see at the top there, mic focus. What's that? Well, basically you can change the focus of the microphone. You can have it be standard. So standard will basically just pick up sort of external noise and pass it through to the phone call or this voice focus. Voice focus's job is to basically take any noise and just isolate the voice and then send that through. I've got a bit of a comparison here. Let's take a listen. Now this is what the other person hears, not what you as the voice, you get what I mean. This is what the other person will hear, not you as the one who's talking. Okay, so this is what it sounds like when I'm using just standard and I'm about to now switch to voice focus. And this is what it sounds like with a voice focus. I am in out indoors with relatively no noise. Let me step outside and let's change the, the thing situation up. So this is outdoors with some construction noise sort of taking place behind me. I don't know if it can be heard, but I definitely can hear it standing outside. Let's change to voice focus. And this is now voice focus. So let's see what the difference is. Tell me if you can notice it. This is just no speakerphone on me talking. I tried to do it in a noisy environment. So outside with construction noise and road noise going on, and you can hear the difference for yourself. Let me know which one you liked better. Number two, sticking with the phone call theme, you can block spam and scam calls using the phone's dialer app. It's called the phone app. But saying phone's phone app, you get my point. In here, in the settings, you've got caller and spam protection. Basically, when this is turned on, you have the option to choose from all scam and spam calls or just high risk ones. And the great thing is, is that when it does do the screen calling, it tells you potential fraud or potential scam or known scam because people can report numbers as scam or spam. And that's great because it just means you can screen it and you don't have to answer it. The amount of times I've saved myself time from answering dud phone calls just because of this feature has been sensational. It uses Hire as a service, so that will identify what the calls are. It's not just about identifying scammers or spam calls. It also can identify callers that aren't in your contacts. And the way it does this is it uses, again, the Hire service. If the number is registered as part of that service, it can display on your screen as well. So at least you can see what if there's a business that's calling you also. Really clever. Turn it on. The third one, number three, is to do with optimizing your phone's performance. This is something else that has kind of been buried deep into a settings menu, but if you know what it is and know what it does, you'll definitely want to use it. Auto optimization, the way this works is in device care under the performance heading. When you go into here, this will basically turn your phone off at regular intervals when it's known that you're not using it. So the phone will learn your usage patterns and then over time it will develop an understanding of when it goes long stretches without being used. That could be at night, which is probably the most obvious time. Could be during the day when you're at work and you stuff it in a locker. Depending on when that is, the phone will recognize that and then restart the phone at those regular intervals. As part of the service too, it does an auto memory refresh. So it will close background apps that aren't being used in excess. And it tells you in here how long ago that was. With the auto restart, you can have it set to done when needed. And again, that's part of what I spoke about before. But if that doesn't suit your style or your schedule, you can have it set to a schedule. So you can choose the day and you can choose the time and like clockwork, because it's based on time, it will actually turn the phone off and straight back on at that scheduled time that you've created. The whole point of it is to keep your phone fresh because like a computer, it does need time to power down and then refresh and start back up again. It's like an old saying, turn it off and then back on again. Your phone needs to do that too. 
So just make sure you do that at regular intervals or just let the phone do it for you with this service. Whilst the features in this video have been hidden from you, don't let your website be hidden from your audience. Use Squarespace to get yourself out there. To get started, you can use Squarespace Blueprint. This is Squarespace's new guided design system to help you pick from pre-curated layouts that then get adapted to your brand's identity and personality. More and more people are browsing your website on their smartphone these days as well, and Squarespace automatically optimizes it for both desktop and mobile. In the back end, Squarespace has a plethora of analytics and SEO optimizations at your disposal to get your brand and product out there. Squarespace has also formally entered the AI game, with Squarespace AI able to assist you in generating content, replying to emails, and so much more, all while utilizing your branding and characteristics of your business. I've tried Squarespace, now it's your turn. Head to squarespace.com for your exclusive free trial, and when you're ready to kickstart your own website and move it into the launch phase, use the link on the screen now and in the description to get 10% off your very first Squarespace purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Something that's been around for a very long time, and this is number four, is your gestures for screenshots. You could want to take a screenshot and, you know, the old fashioned way of holding down the buttons. Sure, that's that can be done. Or you can use the gestures. Now, the gestures, the way this works is you obviously have hold the phone in one hand and using your other hand and the palm, sweep it across the screen and it'll capture a screenshot. It's that simple. You turn it on in the advanced settings under motions and gestures, and that's how you do it. The other thing that's part of this too, is you can mute the phone using gestures also. So if you are getting a phone call or if your alarm's going off and you don't want to fiddle around with swiping to activate or reject it, you can mute it just by whacking your hand down over the top of it or turning it over face down and it will recognize that gesture and mute it for you. It's like the way the watch stuff works. You can put it over the watch and it'll do it. The phone is the same. In fact, I think it started on the phone and then obviously came in to the interactions with the watch. Number five is a camera one. And this one is very obscure, but it's the different shooting methods within the camera. I have touched on this in my how to use every camera feature on your S24, but I'll highlight it here again. There's a couple different ways you can activate the shutter of the camera. The first is voice activated. So you can actually just talk to your camera. You can say words like capture or shoot. It'll activate the shutter and take the photo for you. Smile. Capture. If you're using the selfie camera, you can use palm selfie. And I think this started with the Galaxy S5. It's been around a while. One of the people I used to work with loved palm selfie and showed it to everyone he spoke to. He knows who he is. And the last one is you can activate a floating camera. So you can turn this on, position it anywhere around the screen. So maybe it becomes a bit easier to reach with your thumb, depending on how you grip your phone. They're the ones that you can utilize in One UI, sort of globally. And the last one is kind of ties into camera, but it's to do with the gallery. The gallery is stacked full of features and I do one day plan on a deep dive into all of them. For now though, I wanna just highlight the stories function. The stories tab within the gallery is multifaceted. One, it has at the top some memories. So on this day, whatever years ago it was, and you can kind of scroll your way through them as you wish, but it also creates random sort of stories like for this one that I can see right now, and it might not be there by the time I edit the B-roll, but it says hats on. So it's just a series of photos wearing hats. Cool. But then it will also create stories just extracted from your albums. So it could put together one based on location, it could put together one based on pets. It could put together one based on your children, based on a holiday. And then it shows you the time frame that those photos have been compiled and puts them together in a story. Also, as you can hear now, puts them to music and you can then see when you swipe up the photos that are part of that story. You can also swap out what's part of that story and edit the content. And it's really cool that it sort of auto creates these stories for you. It's a really neat part of Samsung's gallery. When you are in the story itself, you also have the option via the three dot menu to export it out as a separate video and then share it as you like. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in there as well, but don't sleep on the stories tab. There's a lot that you can do in here. Just know that it exists and Samsung's, it works in the background for you. You don't have to do anything. They are my features with One UI that I think are quite hidden, but also I think could be quite beneficial. Let me know if you're using any of them now or if you learned anything from the six that I showed you. Make sure you hit subscribe. Lots more to come always as ever on this channel. Go back and watch some of my other videos. You can learn a lot about Samsung 
from doing so. Make sure you come follow me on my socials. I've got Twitter slash X, and I'm also on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next one. You!